Association, Brian that's, Johnson. That's accurate. I, I, I tried to say Chamber of Commerce for a minute, realized that was wrong. That wouldn't be accurate. No, that was wrong. <laughs> well, it's a lovely October day out there. I yes, think it is. The, I think the phrase frost on the pumpkins applies this morning. Uh, I think so. so I think yeah. so. Yeah. Not ready for frost. Though. I had to scrape my windshield the first time this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not fun. Memorable yeah. event. So, well, hey, we've got a few things going on. Um, wanted to cover some things that the foundation is involved in um, and talk about some of those things. Um, the first thing I wanted to mention was that um, we're going to be helping staff one of the mobile food pantries coming up here next week. Um, that's going to be Friday, November 5th. Um, the pantry starts at 1 p.m. and it is a drive-through event. Um, and it's going to be held at the Fulton County Fairgrounds. Um, so it'll be in the, the field actually across the road from the, from the fairgrounds. Yeah. Starting at 1 p.m., um, this is a event that um, Food Finders Mobile Food Pantry will be here, and our board has um, helped staff another one of these this year. But um, so if you're if you're in need of food, um, mark Friday, November fifth, um, on your calendar, one p.m. the fairgrounds. Stop by and always always have a chance to serve. Um, seems like seems like between 100 and 150 families um, often attend these events. So. Um, if you, if you need food, put that on your calendar. So, um, another big thing that's coming up, and we'll talk about this more next month, but this day called Giving Tuesday. Yes. I wanted to make sure and mention that um, so that folks get that on their calendar. Um, that'll be coming up on Tuesday, November 30th. That's the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, we will be having an open house at the Community Foundation from 10 a.m. to 5.30 that day. Um, we'll have lunch served from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, at this point, I always have to say at this point, with community mm -hmm. health base, we're planning to have, um, offer both a drive-through, which is what we did last year, it was a drive-through event, but um, if community health is good, we will also offer an in-person event if folks want to stop in the office and, and chat. Um, Stay tuned for details as the day approaches. We'll, we'll know more as we get closer to that. But that's the plan as we know it at this moment. So um, we will have the drive through no matter what um, and have, um, have some box lunches available for that. Um, and we're hoping to offer the in-person option. Um, a couple of things to note, um, WROI will be there broadcasting yeah. live. So listen to WROI. Um, that morning for information about what's going on at the foundation um, and as we've done in past years we have a, a couple of funds that we're able to match this year um, so we have matches available for the Lake Manitow Association Sustainability Fund um, which is a fund that's going to help with long-term maintenance at the lake and then also Promise Indiana 529 fund um, that's similar to what we did last year um, with the 529, that's a fund that helps students create 529 college savings account. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, again, that date is Tuesday, November 30th. Get that on your calendar. Something else I wanted to mention. Um, recently, we have uh, made some grants through the Liberty Township Endowment Fund. Um, some things helping with renovations at the Liberty Township Park. Um, they were able to help repair some of the playground equipment and make some improvements there. Um, they also have a great basketball court, but they needed some um, repair to some of the bleachers for folks that may be watching or, or using those in between games. And so um, we're able to award the, the Liberty Lions a grant of $2,500 to help make some of those renovations, and they've, they've got most of them complete now. So um, the other exciting new to, news about that fund is we have an anonymous donor that has contributed or is planning to contribute up to ten thousand dollars on a dollar for dollar match for any gifts um, to that fund so far we've had a few contributions to that fund but um, the liberty township fund is is one that makes grants specifically in liberty township okay. um, and then there is a group of folks um, that live in liberty township that sit down and review those grant applications and then make recommendations about um, 
where those grant dollars are spent. So it's really a, a local thing. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in participating in this match, um, we'd love to talk to you about that um, and, and show you how, how this fund can impact Liberty Township going forward um, into the future as it already has. This is the third year we've been able to award grants out of this fund. So um, a really neat opportunity. Um, talking about grants, um, we wanted to talk about a few that we've made recently. Um, of course, something that's been been a big thing in our community this year has been the Rochester Splash Pad. Yes. I think it may be a little bit cold for us to hang out the Splash Pad today. Oh, I think so. You might, you might get a little uh, sick. You might get a little cold and frozen and all those things. I know um, they've they've been able to install the actual splash pad, um, tested the equipment. My understanding is it's winterized for the winter, so unfortunately we won't be able to enjoy it till next spring, but um, the splash pad is located at the Rochester City Park, um, just next to Manitou Mountain. Okay. Um, will be a great opportunity for families to come and play and cool off in the summertime and, and have a good time. Um, a really neat opportunity. Um, the foundation has been able to grant $25,000 to help support this project. And awesome. We're excited about um, this opportunity and, and I know there's a number of partnerships, things like the city and the parks department have worked together with the group that was, was working on that. So uh, congratulations and good job to the folks that were involved in that. Um, something else that um, has been a big deal over the last year or so is um, something called pickleball. Yes. Seems popular. I know we have a couple of new courts um, in town and there's also a group um, working on installing four courts over by the Rochester City Pool. Okay. Um, so there we've been able to grant $20,000 to help with that project. I know they are still looking for a few more donations to um, be able to help complete this project, but there'll be um, four courts installed um, by the Rochester City Pool. They've already started working on um, paving a parking lot in preparation to finish it next spring. Um, and so that's a great opportunity. Pickleball seems like it's a, it's, it's been very popular lately. And this is just one of those amenities that um, we're excited to see come to our community, another opportunity for recreation. And, yeah, having fun. And just so we're aware, you're not just hitting pickles. You're not <laughs> hitting pickles. No, we we had an opportunity to do a photo op with the group last night, and they've got some pretty cool paddles, and it, it's it's kind of almost a modified what I think of as a wiffle ball. Okay. And and the neat thing about this is it's it's one of those activities that people of all ages can play. I mean, you've yeah. got anywhere from from five and six year olds playing up to folks. I know I've seen um, folks in their 80s and 90s playing pickleball. I know there's some adaptive rules that allow folks that may, be, may have some, some mobility restraints um, to be able to play this. It, it's a really neat activity that I think about anybody can enjoy. So I'm looking forward, I have not, full disclosure, I have not played pickleball yet. I'm Neither looking I. forward to learning it in the spring. So um, it looks like Looks like it should be fun. It's kind of a, a cross between tennis and ping pong. Okay. So, looking forward to that. So, um, another grant that we've been able to help recently with was the Akron Food Pantry. Um, they have a group of churches that work together in the Akron area as United We Stand Ministries, and um, they have been based in a church, but they've recently had the opportunity to um, renovate and use a um, garage in the community and they're mm -hmm. making some some um, renovations to that and will offer some great opportunities as far as having more space more accessibility it's a it's a ground level something you can really drive up to and um, be able to access it um, in a in an easier manner um, we'll also give the clients that use the food pantry um, more opportunities for a variety of things so we're able to grant ten thousand dollars to that group um, working on that and I think it will be a, a great addition to um, the Akron community so um, the last thing that I wanted to mention before we talk with our guest um, I know it's still October mm -hmm. but looking at the calendar November starts next next week so mm -hmm. um, thinking about end of year giving um, a lot of times folks think about 
um, planning for tax purposes or end of year charitable giving. Um, it's always interesting. I always encourage folks to talk with your financial planner or your accountant, um, tax advisor. Um, talk to them about how a gift um, made, whether it be to the community foundation or some charity in our community, um, can ha actually help you save on taxes. Um, there's opportunities for you to be able to direct donations to um, causes that you're passionate about and also potentially save some taxes. Everybody's situation is is individual, so I, I always encourage folks to talk, to talk with your professional about how that could um, affect your tax burden, but um, we'd love to love to help you out, help you make an impact in the community. There's there's often ways other than just writing a check, thinking about things like um, charitable IRA rollovers, um, donations of stock, appreciated assets. A lot of times those things can actually um, save significantly on tax concerns. So I'm um, just thinking about end of year giving. Um, now is the time to think about that. So that's my plug for that. So well, we have with us um, a guest. Um, I'd say a special guest because we've been hanging out for a while, um, but we have with us Jeff Finke. Jeff is a um, current Fulton County and Northern Indiana Community Foundation board member through the end of this year, and then he hits a thing called a term limit, which we're very sad about, um, but hope he'll come hang out with us. So, so welcome, Jeff, and I guess I'd just give you the opportunity maybe to introduce yourself people that are listening that may not know who Jeff Finke is? Well, I'm, I live in Kiwana. I, you know, like you said, I've been a member of the foundation for uh, 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. Wow. 2011 in yeah. Fulton County and 2014 and it's, on the NIC. It's crazy. It's gone crazy quick. Yeah. Very quick, but very fun, very enjoyable, very satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe talk a little bit about some of the things you're involved in in Kiwana. I know you got got a lot of things going on. Well, I'm on I'm on the Kiwana Town Council, and I've been there for quite a while. And uh, I'm also the head of Kiwana's Heart, which is a local 501c3, and probably better known as the sponsor of the Kiwana Fall Festival, yeah. which just uh, happened a couple weeks ago. Just happened. Had a, had a great time. We, it was that, a so. it was a good festival. Yeah. yeah, we're just putting it to bed now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and involved in some other things like business and the yeah, my, yeah, I'm I'm one of the owners of Kiwana Metal Specialties, which has been there since 1960, and yeah. um, so we're you know kind of entrenched in Kiwana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, we we've enjoyed having you on our board, and so I guess maybe a couple of questions. Um, that I'd ask of you, maybe think about some of the favorite things that that you be, the foundation has been involved in with your time on the board. Oh, it's it, there's it's corny, but there's been so many. It's hard to just pick one. Uh, you know, every every time you do something, you feel really good about something new rolls in, and you feel even better about it, even more invigorated about it. But. Yeah. Uh, if I had to pick one, just because it's been on my mind a lot recently, has been the Kiwana Fall Festival uh, Fund in honor of Luke May, yeah. which was established to as a sustainable fund to uh, help with forming and paying for the festival every year, and uh, and with Luke or with Tom Mate's recent passing, that's that's been on my mind a lot, yeah. but. But that, uh, you know, that's a quick one. But there, there's so many, you know, that, that go on all through the county that have been really exciting to be a part of. Yeah, and I think that talking about the fall festival, I know one one thing that that group has worked towards is making that a sustainable festival and having having some income stream. And of course, um, Luke was very involved in. I think probably was uh, the motivation to start the festival in the first place, as far as his pushing for something like that. He, he was. You know, it, going back, uh, you know, Tom Tom approached me like 20 years ago and said, hey, my son feels bad for the kids in town because there's nothing to do. Now they're back in school and on the weekend it's quiet and, you know, what would you think if I got a spook house to come in town for a weekend? What do you, is that doable? And I said, well, yeah, I think it's doable. And then I thought, oh, geez, what have I committed to? Yeah. Uh, but you know that's the that's how the festival was born, 
Uh, because Luke wanted to do something special for the local kids, and, and Tom carried that on all these years with the festival, and we hope to carry that on you know, as many years as we can in the yeah. future. So for somebody listening that's never been to the Kiwana Fall Festival, maybe maybe describe it a little bit, because I think it's, it's interesting. People say, well, that sounds kind of neat, and then they go and they're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Hey, for, for a town with about 630 residents, uh, you know, the festival comes up once a year and, and our numbers all of a sudden increase to about 25,000 people. Uh, you know, everything from a parade, carnival, rides, uh, activities, bake sale, you know, any, anything you can dream of, Tom May built into the festival. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty well-rounded and, and it brings a lot of joy to a lot of people, not just locals, but a lot of people from out of town. We have a lot of visitors that occupy that section of Fulton County for a full weekend that, you know, probably otherwise would never visit Fulton County. So that's kind of exciting too. And I think the whole, the whole family friendly aspect of it, it's, it's a festival that you can come enjoy. And I know Tom had mentioned numerous times he really, he had this passion for helping families that may not be able to afford to do things normally but the fall festival was one of those times where you could come and enjoy it no matter what your economic status was. right absolutely and that that was a big that was a big goal for Tom was every festival should be affordable and easy for somebody to come and spend the day and spend just a little bit of money if they spent money uh, you know, one of the th big things that he's done, I think maybe starting four or five years ago, was uh, working with all the food vendors to, to allow or to make available free food for kids. Um, you know, that doesn't happen anywhere else that we're aware of, but, you know, in, in that respect, you can bring your kids, your kids can have festival food, and it's not coming out of your wallet, it's coming out of the vendors who see the vision that Tom had for making this family friendly. Yeah. And, it, and it's neat to see when you when you see the list of sponsors for this, the dozens of local organizations or businesses that help um, make this possible. It's, it's really neat to see. And I, I think it's the thing that always surprises people. You, you mentioned like that 25,000 people number. People are always like, that's not something that I'm expecting. And then they go to it and they say, well, you know, that was right. It's, it, so. it's pretty full. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, you do a double take when you look down Main Street during the parade and the people lined up, you know, yes. it's, it's crazy. But yeah. it's a crazy good thing. Yeah. Well, another question I have for you is, is maybe think about some of the things that have changed during your time on the foundation board. I don't know if there's anything that, that stands out to you about um, now compared to maybe 2011 when you joined us there's there's so much that is different now and it you know these are all great things that have happened you know and it, whether it's uh you know the, the availability of grant opportunities for for an organization that needs something when i first came on you know, we basically had a scholarship season and two grant seasons and you know if somebody wanted a grant they had to apply well in advance to make sure they hit the right grant cycle uh, and all that's gone because it, now it's year-round granting and you can apply anytime. So when you have the need, when your organization has a need, you can hit it right now and, and seek the funding to get your goal done. And that's pretty amazing in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, to say nothing of the fact that way back, you know, it, I think it was $60,000, I think, was the total grant budget for the year and yeah. you know, five times that yeah. now. So there's so much that can go on, so much that can be done now versus that. Those, yeah. you know, those are big things that get your attention, the dollar amount. Yeah. But, uh, but that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and the fact that the foundation is out in the community looking for opportunities, uh, looking for people that need encouragement, groups that need encouragement to, to make their goal happen yeah. you know, rather than just waiting for you to come to the foundation. That's that's a big difference, I think. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's been interesting to see how that has has grown, and like you said, the funds available and being able to help organizations on the timeline that they need versus the timeline that that we would have grants available has been a huge change. Right. So, um, 
I had another note on the list. I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but I know you've been involved in a couple of funds yourself with your family and whatnot. I'll give you, I'll give you an opportunity to talk about those if you want to. Or <laughs> well, can, Jeff, can... Jeff is kind of a quiet person as far as what him and his family do, but wanted to give you a chance to share if you wanted to. I, well, I will see if I can remember uh, all. Uh, so the, I've been involved with the creation of the Kiwana Union Endowment Fund, which, like the Liberty Fund, you know, benefits yes. the residents in Union Township in Kiwana. Yeah. Uh, the, with the, I think it's the Town of Kiwana Endowment Fund. Yeah. Uh, I've been involved with uh, the, the the Finky Family Fund. Yeah. Uh, oh, geez, I'm I'm sure I'm forgetting. Right. So those are the highlights. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. kind of. Kind of neat to see and, and get the opportunity to, to partner with some of those. I know um, the first one that you mentioned, the Kiwana Union Township Endowment Fund, is was the first of its kind in our community, and um, it, it was neat to work with you. I think we actually started working on that before you joined the board, and that I think may, so. Maybe how we got you yeah, involved here. Her, so, yeah. um, but it has been neat to see how that has grown, and mm -hmm. things like the fall festival, a library, food pantry, VFW. Yeah. I mean. The list goes on as far as things that have granted to that. So, well, we're speaking with Jeff Finke, um, who unfortunately is hitting his term limit on the Community Foundation Board this year. I don't know if you have any final thoughts that you want to want to share. Um, now, now's your time to do that. Yeah, well, no pressure. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I've I've just been very fortunate and very grateful to be a part of the Fulton County Community Foundation and be well-rounded in, in all aspects of the foundation uh, you know, and I, I can see the good that goes on in Fulton County and you know, maybe another big change is in 2011 if you mentioned the Fulton County, if you, Fulton County Community Foundation a lot of people didn't know who you were talking about. I think you know, a big change and, and that has been a goal over the years a lot more people are aware of it and realize you know, what is going on behind the scenes to make good things happen in Fulton County. And I've just been grateful and fortunate to be a part of that. Yeah. Well, on, on behalf of the foundation board and staff and the community as a whole, I'd like to say thank you. Um, I think part of the success of the community foundation is having good people involved. Um, and Jeff is one of those good people in our community that isn't always necessarily standing in the front unless you go to a town board meeting. <laughs> file a complaint Very or something, something like there, that. Yeah. Um, but really, um, good folks like Jeff involved with the foundation that help make things happen, think of ideas, come around things. I mean, you mentioned the grant cycle changing. That was a huge conversation that we had as a board and, and a great opportunity to tr try something new that has really benefited many organizations in our community. So. So on behalf of the community and the board and staff, I'd like to say thank you um, for your time on the foundation board. Yeah. We're going to miss having you at board meetings, but we're, we've got we've got plans to keep you involved. So I will <laughs> we'll, be far away. We'll keep you keep you involved, and I'm sure that the town of Kiwana will continue to benefit from your leadership. Yeah. And so I uh, appreciate that. So so we've been been speaking with um, Jeff Finke, who's a um, Retiring, not old enough necessarily to retire. I was hitting say, his term, I'm, hitting his term limit. Um, board member um, for Fulton County and the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. So thank you for joining us today, Jeff. All right, thank um, you. Just a, a couple of reminders: um, Giving Tuesday, November thirtieth. Um, get that on your calendar. Um, the mobile food pantry will be coming up on Friday, November fifth. The Fulton County Fairgrounds at at one p.m. and also encourage folks to think about um, end of year giving. Um, a day like Giving Tuesday would be great to be able to make those donations as well, so I encourage folks to, to get that plan together. So, um, If you have any questions about what we talked about um, today on the program, you can always find us uh, multiple ways. Um, you can check us out online, nicf.org, um, and our grant applications um, are available there. Um, if you have questions about things going on, don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, I've got to get this in my mind. I've got to do all 10 digits now, right? Yes, you do. 574 224 3223. You can check us out on Facebook. 
um, or on the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, or if you're in the area, now that 9th Street is a nice new street, you can yeah. find and get to our office, um, 227 East 9th Street. Love to talk to folks about any ideas or questions they may have about um, ways to make Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Brian, so much. Uh, we'll talk to you again in a month. Looking forward to it.